Have you ever wondered why one day you feel fine, the next minute you've got a headache, fatigue, a little bit of fever, and then the next day you feel completely terrible? This is what we call the stages of infection. This is where we get infected by a microorganism and it goes through its own stages of life cycle. Our immune system tries to attack it and it goes through what we call the stages of infection. So in this video, I'm gonna explain the stages of infection through this diagram. So as you can see, there's a, a lot of things that happen in the body as we are processing an infection. But we're gonna focus on five main stages. The incubation phase, the prodromal phase, the stages of illness, the stage of decline, and the stage of convalescence. Now with that, I'm gonna give you two examples. I'm gonna talk about influenza and gastroenteritis and explain how they are similar, but a little bit different in the way that the stages of infection occur. But let's start off with a generic overview of the stages of infection. So firstly, let's get our head around this diagram. On the x-axis, we have over time. This would be generally days. And on the y-axis, it is symptoms. But we could also have here the amount or quantity of the microorganism in the body. Here we can see these pathophysiological things happening in the body, which we'll call steps, and there's seven in total, and some of these will correspond to the five stages. One thing I will say, some sources will only use four, they generally won't include the stages of decline, but for today I've included five. All right, so let's see what actually happens in the body with these stages. Firstly, what needs to happen at step one is the microorganism needs to get into the body. Now, in some cases, it will already be there and the infection is going to be an opportunistic infection. But let's say in these cases today, it has to gain entry into the body. So it has to inoculate. So that would be step one, gains entry into the body. Stage two or step two, this is where it needs to evade your immune system. It needs to kind of hide its way out, be sneaky and not be caught. So that needs to kind of evade the immune system. And then at step three, we need to start replicating. So the, the microorganism, whether it's a virus, a bacteria, a fungi, it needs to start to replicate. So these three, first three steps, one, two, three, corresponds to incubation. So incubation is getting into the body, evading the immune system and starting to replicate. As, so the numbers are starting to come up here. Now, this is the point where we're starting to see some symptoms arising. This is due to your immune system. Your immune system starts to recognize that there's something there. It wants to tell the rest of the immune system to ramp up and become more active. So the way it does that is it releases cytokines and chemical mediators, and they are gonna generate the start of the symptoms. So at this point, up to just before five is what we call the prodromal period. Prodromal, I'll tick that off. Prodromal means the period of when you start to feel like you're coming down with something. So you're gonna to start to feel sick, non-specific symptoms. And this is because of the immune system, it's talking to each other. So we get low grade fevers, we might get muscle aches and pains, joint pains, we might also just feel tired and lethargic. That is the prodromal period. As you can see, the symptoms are starting to ramp up, as are the number of microorganisms. So the organism is replicating rapidly here. Now we move to stage five. Now this is the stage of illness, also known as the active phase. This is where the specific symptoms of the infection takes hold. So it's in the respiratory tract, you're gonna get respiratory symptoms. In the urinary tract, urinary-like symptoms. Gastrointestinal tract, gastrointestinal-like symptoms. So they are specific to where you are infected. Now this period is the highest level of the, of the symptoms and the greatest number or quantity of the microorganism in the body. Hopefully at this point, your immune system starts to pull it in check and start decreasing the symptoms and the decrease in the number of the organism. But if the organism, microorganism is really virulent, really nasty, or you are immune compromised or your immune system isn't adequate, it will just continue to go up. And what will happen there is you can develop sepsis, um, septic shock, and even lead into death. So that is obviously something we were wanting to avoid. Moving to step six, this is going to be the stage of decline. This is where your immune system kicks in. The decline is the decline in symptoms. The decline also is the number of microorganisms. So we start to see it dropping off. 
Which leads us to the last part, which is going to be the stage of convalescence. This is where we hope to return to normal, both in symptoms, but also clearing the microorganism out of the body. So that's gonna range in how long it takes, depending on how serious the infection was and how uh, efficient your immune system is. But it's important to note that although we might clear the infection in some cases, we may get a chronic phase. So we call this chronic, meaning long-standing. And this can be both in disease, but also the infection may stay there. Some examples could be tuberculosis, which is a bacteria. The immune system kind of does its best to isolate it, but the infection stays dormant. So in that phase, you're not getting active symptoms in the dormant phase, but it can reinfect you, which then you would get in uh, the active symptoms. Another example could be two viruses, the herpes simplex virus, or also the, the virus uh, varicella, which is like the chickenpox virus. They stay dormant in the nervous system. And when you are usually run down, then they come out as cold sores, which is herpes, uh, herpes simplex, or varicella, which comes out as shingles. Another example of the chronic phase could be hepatitis. The virus infects you and your liver, but the chronic inflammation occurs in your liver and it becomes scarred up leading to cirrhosis. Another example could be long COVID. So uh, COVID that we're all aware of, we may get rid of the virus, but we may get a whole protracted period of symptoms. A final interesting example is some viruses can actually lead to cancer. So an example there would be human papillomavirus, which can infect the epithelium of the cervix, which can then lead to dysplasia, and then it could lead to cervical cancer. So that's again just highlighting, although we may process the virus and get rid of it, we actually may develop chronic symptoms or chronic disease as a result. So that's all the stages we've gone through. Now I'll give you the two examples. The first example is influenza or the flu. So here, the virus has to get into your body, usually through the respiratory tract. This would be done through droplets or aerosols. So it has to get in, it has to evade your immune system, and it has to start replicating. The incubation phase of influenza is about one to three days with an average of two days. It's important to note that you are infectious in that period. Prodromal pe period, not that long, maybe 12 hours. It's fairly, fairly short, so you start to feel that coming down with something, headaches, feverish, not feeling great, your immune system is kicking in here, then the full active phase where the virus is causing havoc in your respiratory system. So you get nasal congestion, sore throat, starts coughing, causing a lot of discomfort in the respiratory tract. This can last upwards of five to seven days. So this period is quite long. And then hopefully we go down to complete convalescence, which is getting rid of it, Generally, you'll be done within two weeks. However, because we've got a, had a lot of inflammation damage in the respiratory tract, we'll get some residual symptoms, such as a post-viral cough. So it is something that can, can extend out beyond two weeks. That example is influenza. Now, gastrointestinal. A good example here would be the norovirus, which sometimes they call the stomach flu. Now, for this case, the incubation is gonna be very quick. It has to get into your mouth, usually through food, contaminated food or through person-person contact or from a contaminated surface that you put into your mouth. From there, it gets into your mouth, has to travel down your esophagus and get through your stomach. And so they've got stomach acid there, so it has to get through and then take hold in your intestines. So this could be only hours. It's going to be fairly short. Then we have about a, under a day for the prodromal period. This is, again, where you'll start to feel a little bit feverish, queasy, um, possibly headache, not feeling great, and then we go into the full active stage. Here, because the virus is again causing havoc, it's causing destruction and death and injury to all your mucosal lining of your intestine. So you're gonna be vomiting, lots of diarrhea, losing fluid, so you can be dehydrated, and that is going to last for a few days whilst you are getting rid of the virus and clearing the virus. So again, the virus might clear maybe within a few days, extending out to a week, 
You can be still contagious, particularly from the fecal um, output. So that can be still contagious as you're shedding the virus and getting rid of the virus. But as you'd imagine, because you've caused destruction to your gastrointestinal tract, you've lost your biota or a lot of the biota, it's going to cause a whole lot of disruption to your gastrointestinal physiology. So again, symptoms can last weeks as you are repairing your intestines as a result of that virus. So even though it's cleared possibly within a week, you're going to get residual symptoms as a result. So there we have it. That are, that's the stages of infections. You, we've gone through the seven steps of what pathophysiologically happens in the body, how they correspond to the five stages. And I've given you two examples, influenza and norovirus, to show you how they can be same but also different. Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. We've got hundreds of others just like this. If you want to contact us, please do so on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Dr. Mike Todorovic at D-R-M-I-K-E-T-O-D-O-R-O-V-I-C. Speak to you soon.